Yo, 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 what up, dog? Chris from the Relenting Brush checking in with you this morning. Hope everyone's had a good week and ready for a great weekend. Wicked video for you today. Uh, the guys over at Hardcore Miniatures were super, super kind and sent me some STLs to print for their new Orc Miniatures that they're releasing. All links and details in the sections below. So enormous thank you to them. I printed them off and painted them, and as thanks, I said I would do a painting tutorial video on how I paint my Orcs and give them plenty of shout outs. So please go and check them out if you're into printing or buying the physicals, get involved. Anyway. So this video is going to be how I paint my Orcs. Uh, I've done it on a couple of the printed 28mm versions of these boys. So they came out absolutely wicked. I really, really enjoyed painting them. So I'll get some close-ups of those soon. But for the purpose of the tutorial, I decided to be big and brave and print an upscale version. This is 200% printed straight up. Uh, I printed this by simply scaling up the STL that they sent me. I didn't even take the supports down and re-support it. All the supports were up with the model itself. And it came out fantastic and it printed great. And now we're going to show you how to paint this bad boy up. Before I do that, you have the opportunity to win these two literal bad boys. All you need to do is leave an orky comment on this video. Don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. And for your chance to win both of these, leave an orky comment in the video. But that's that. Let's get started with painting some orcs. So just before we get started, I thought I'd show you some examples of orcs I've painted previously. Here's the big boy we're going to paint today. Again, huge thank you to Hardcore Miniatures. These files are absolutely wicked. They printed great with the pre-supports. Uh, I'm still quite a novice at 3D printing, so any pre-supported files that come out this good, I'm enormously appreciative of, so thank you. Uh, I started this bad boy out with a Xenothal Prime, so I primed him all over in matte black from Colorforge, and then gave him a Xenothal top down with matte white from Colorforge. These are the 28mm examples I printed and painted, they came out exactly as I wanted them to. Really, really love this kind of Stormtrooper shooter boy for Steel Legion. Uh, if I could have a squad of guys in a similar arc to this, I'd be over the moon. Really, really easy to paint, really, really nice and quick. Lots of contrasts, lots of subtle detailing and weathering. And there's a few products in this video I'm going to be talking about and reviewing as I go. Love this guy. Uh, he was really good fun to paint. Not as good as the shooter boy, but that's because I'm a sucker for a shooter. But uh, they go great against the Games Workshop equivalent boys. They sit with them really, really nicely. Here's my war bus for my orcs. So as you can see, I keep the colors in a similar vein bright luminous green dark fabrics warm metallics and i do this in a really really quick way using zenithal highlights and contrast paints so comparison wise here's the shooter boy up with another shooter boy he's a little bit bigger but i think if you've got 100 of these guys on the table that's not going to be much of a problem likewise if you're a printer you can always scale it down like 5 10 percent and see how it looks but personally i think these look absolutely great next to each other Here's a Age of Sigmar Cruel Boy painted up in a similar effort. There's a little bit of fancy airbrushing on his sticker uh, and with a swampy themed base and more of a verdigree shield, but the premise is the same. Bright green skin and then dark materials everywhere else. So as I mentioned, I gave this big boy a heavy zenithal of matte black from Colorforge and then matte white. I went a bit heavy on the white, but because he's a bigger model, I want to emphasize the bright colors. So I just went a little bit more all over with the white than I normally would do. We're going to hit the flesh with some Plague Bearer Flesh. This starts giving us that really nice, sickly, mucusy green skin tone, which we then intensify the green with later with a shade. So there's no delicacy or finesse here. We're just going to load a brush up straight from the pot and get all this flesh painted in Plague Bearer Flesh. If you get this on the fabrics or the weapon or anything like that, don't stress too much. This is a really, really pale colour. Normally the other colours we're going to use after this go over it absolutely fine. Similarly, you can see when I'm painting his face, I'm trying to avoid his teeth. If you do get it on the teeth, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to be a little bit more delicate here. So there's the Plague Bearer flesh down. All that green's looking great. It's already setting a great premise for what we want our skin tone to look like. Up next, we're going to do some Black Legion. And this is for his shirt. Once again, very little finesse. We're going to try and avoid the skin and the straps of his braces, purely for the purposes of less time to clean up later. 
So let's get that t-shirt coloured with black Legion contrast paint. I mention this paint a lot to my clients because it's, to me, oh we're going to do the boots as well, don't forget this. Uh, it's brilliant for many reasons. First off, it's a solid black contrast, so it goes over pretty much any colour and shades it to be a nice flat black. Uh, second of all, it's really, really good for almost repriming. So if I've got a predominantly white model with some black details, I'll spray the model white and then use this on the details I want to be black. It's a lot better than doing two thin layers of a standard acrylic black paint because it's so thin and malleable. And likewise, because it's a contrast, it's got very, very nice flow to it. But with other contrasts that are quite transparent, this one's quite heavily pigmented. So it's a really nice heavy black. Again, I'm going in here trying to be delicate not to hit that armband, his braces, uh, the green details. But again, if you do, don't worry, it'll be reaped. It can always be tidied up. Up next, we're going to paint his trousers. We're going to use Wildwood for this. I think for the smaller boy here, I use Garagex Sewer, but I've since run out. Uh, so Wildwood's nice. It's a nice deep rich brown, but it translates a little bit funny on this model where it's quite tea stainy, as is kind of associated with the contrast paints however we can work with this uh, because it can give us the illusion of it being a different texture to the shirt the boots the skin so we'll use that to our advantage but we'll go back to that later so yes we'll apply this all over his trousers So up to this point we've got almost all our non-metallic base layers down and at this point I'm really happy with how it's translating. It's very much looking like the smaller boy but bigger which is absolutely dope. So what we're going to do next is we're going to do a little bit more work on the skin. To do this we're going to use Beal Tan Green to recess shade all the skin. Now this does a few things. Uh, first off it adds another shade of green to the skin uh, to give us that really nice deep shaded green. Second of all it applies another colour to kind of work against the tea stainy effect of the contrast uh, and again we're using techniques to differentiate textures so the skin's going to look different to the clothes, some clothes are going to look different to other clothes using really simple methods that don't take a lot of work and again the premise of when you've got a hundred art boys to paint for an art war you really don't want to spend forever painting them so these techniques are going to be really really helpful in getting a lot of arts painted quickly into a good standard. So using a long, thin, bristled brush, we're going to gently drag this paint into the recesses, in between all his muscles, knuckles, fingers, under his lip, around his nose. And you'll notice when it's done uh, just how much of a difference this makes to the skin. It really does add that deep, intense green hue to it. You can, of course, do this with other paints. You can try something like a Thonian Camo Shade or Quaily Green Shade to have slightly different hues of green across your Orc Army. But I really, really enjoy this. I really like how it finishes the model. So I'm going to skip it to Beal Tang Green and see how it translates to this big boy.
And again, orc faces and the features of the face are so, so much fun to paint. And applying this green shade to it really does give it that more kind of menacing alien, vibrant greeny kind of hue of a green that makes it a lot more menacing and makes it instantly recognizable as a 4K orc. So again, we're just going to dot line this into the recesses of his face. He's got a few wrinkles on his chin and his lips, so we'll do that there. Under his eyes, around his cheekbone, uh, around his nose and his schnoz. Um, yeah, and just try and be as neat as you can. If you do make any mistakes or you do get somewhere you don't want it, use a little bit of auric flesh just to tidy it up with a bit of thinned down auric flesh. So there it is, as you can see, it's really, really made a big difference to that skin. Uh, it'll be even more noticeable once we finish getting rid of all these white features, because as soon as you start putting dark features around this green, it'll pop even more. So it's translating well to the little boy. Let's carry on painting the big boy. Up next is snake bite leather. Now this is how I paint orc teeth. Uh, I used to do it the old fashioned way that Peachy taught me in Warhammer Derby, where, or Games Workshop Derby it would have been. Uh, where you go brown, then you go to a light brown, then you go to a dull bone, then you go to a bright bone. Now, thankfully, you can do it with two or three paints. So we're going to gently and delicately paint the teeth of this awkward snake bite leather contrast. Now what we're going to do is tidy up the bits of white that we're going to work on next. So any black or brown or green we've got where we don't want it, we're going to use Pro Acryl's Bold Titanium White just to gently tidy these up. If you've not used Monument Hobby's Pro Acryl paints, you are genuinely missing out. They are an absolute dream. I've got a big collection of their metallics and non-metallics and they're all fantastic. Grab yourself a couple of whites, a couple of browns, maybe some bone colours. Uh, give them a try and I guarantee you'll absolutely love them. They also airbrush fantastic as well. There we go, so we've tidied up all those bits that we want to be white ready for the next round of contrast. So the armband, the braces, the belt. And the next step is to get those painted. What we're going to do first is do the teeth, teeth first. Uh, we're going to use Bright Ivory again from Pro Acryl just to highlight the first half of the teeth. So we want this to start from about halfway up the tooth up towards the top. As you can see, I'm just gently feathering it with my brush. There's not a lot of paint on there. It's thin, but it's not too thin where I'm losing control. While we've got this big base that he sat on, uh, you can use that to get the excess paint off your brush just by spiraling it on there. It's a lot easier way to control what's on your brush as opposed to constantly going back to your palette. Likewise, some people use their thumb or their nails, whatever works for you. But as you can see here, I'm making sure I'm getting behind the teeth. I'm getting the little trompers on his underbite and just ensuring I get this bright ivory on there. Now we're going to dull those back down with a little bit of brown wash from Pro Acryl. You can use Agrax from Citadel. You can use Murky Maya from Dark Star. Any brown wash will do. And again, we're just going to use this to cover all the teeth. We're going to ensure that we get the gap between the teeth and his lip to ensure we get that nice bit of depth uh, and establish that gap between his teeth and his lip and his skin. So we're just going to gently apply this here, ensure we get all the teeth sorted and then leave it to dry. Real. Then while that's drying, stick to the mantra of what could I be painting while this dries. We're going to do Basiliconum Grey on his braces and his belt. And this is why we tidied those up earlier, because Basiliconum Grey is quite a pale colour. It won't cover any black or brown we've got on those bits, so we're going to tidy those up with white, which we did, and then paint these Basiliconum Grey. Likewise, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the darker colours of contrast are great because you can get the Basiliconum grey on them and it won't make a shade of difference. So be gentle, don't waste your paint and overdo it and fill any detail, but if you do get some of this onto that black, don't stress, it's not going to show up.
Time for some red. We've got Ball Red Contrast here, which is a beautifully rich pigmented paint from Citadel. I'm going to give this a good rattle. I'm going to apply this to the eyes and the little Steel Legion symbol he's got on his armband. So you do need to be a little bit careful here. Top tips when painting eyes, hold the model upside down against the light because you'll see more of the eyes that you need to paint. Attack it from the side, but in a downwards motion. It's a lot easier to pull a brush down with accuracy. And then hold the model to the side so you can see more of the eye and do it in line motion so that you're not jabbing or poking and likely to make mistakes. Do one side, flip it over, and then again, downward strokes from the side like this. If you do get this on the green, again, don't stress. Go back, get some of your wire flesh. Not wire flesh, what is it? Auric flesh. Thin it down with a bit of water and tidy that up that way. And there you go. All eyes done. Now, the wash on the teeth is dry, so we're going to go back with the bright ivory from Pro Acryl and do our last highlight on those. I've painted hundreds and hundreds of orcs over the years. They were one of my first proper armies, 440k. And I tell everyone, if you've never experienced the joy of painting an orc smile, get it done. There is something extraordinarily satisfying about painting the highlights on an orc's teeth. It just really finishes off that model nicely. Uh, there's something suitably old school about this vile mushroom alien with green skin and ramshackle armor and weapons with bright luminous white teeth. So yes, we're going to... Again, hold the model upside down. It's easier to do highlights in a downward stroke gently than from any other angle. And we're just going to dot the top of these teggers. And then from about halfway to two thirds from the teeth, we're going to feather upwards. And this gives us that really nice establishment between dirt on his gums and the bottom set of the teeth to a nice bright highlight on those toothy pegs. Again, if you've never painted an orc's grin, get an orc's head and give it a go. It's fantastic. There he is. What well, a handsome bugger. All right, time to hit with some highlights. These three colors are for the clothing textures. So the dark neutral gray for the black, the brown for the tra trousers, and then the warm gray for the braces and the belt and the shoelaces. So going back earlier to what I said about using different paints and techniques to apply different textures, you can do the Citadel and the heavy metal way of highlighting every single surface in an identical fashion, but with different colors. If that's your jam, amazing, have a great time. That's certainly not how I like to paint. I like to highlight some things more than others. So for instance, this shirt, I'm not going to highlight a lot. I'm just going to use this dark neutral gray from Pro Acryl just to pick out a few folds and creases, just to kind of add a little bit of interest to that black. As you can see, it's very minimal. It's not very neat. It's quite messy because again, if you've got 100 old boys that you want to get ready for a game, you don't want to spend a day highlighting 100 shirts to an immaculate level. So again, the highest points, the sharpest creases and folds, we're just going to whack a little bit of this dark neutral grey on there, just to add another colour to this shirt. Up next, we're going to use this brown leather from Scale Color for the trousers. Now, what I was mentioning earlier about using different amounts of highlights for different textures, the wildwood we used on these trousers has tea stained quite a lot, and there's a lot of variation in color. It's quite glossy. So because of that, we're going to use a little bit more of this paint for some extra chunkier highlights for a couple of reasons. It's going to A, get rid of some of that tea staininess and unify the color a bit more to make it look a little bit more natural. And B, if we highlight these more with different variations of the amount of paint and the shade, then it's going to break up the texture from the shirt, so it's going to make the eye think it's made of a different fabric than the t-shirt. So again, there's not a lot of finesse with this. I'm just going in with big, thick, chunky highlights on the folds and creases, and then a few on the flatter surfaces as well, where you can see it's settled really, really dark with the contrast paint. Uh, this is going to really cover that up. It's also going to add another nice color that we need. And again, when this transcribes to a smaller 28mm model, it's going to be a lot easier to do and it's going to have a nicer effect uh, because, again, we're not going to spend forever highlighting each individual line and crease, but we're also going to have a nice variation of textures across the whole army that unifies it.
So by this point, it's really starting to pay off. We've got the contrast that's giving us that nice variation of brown to black. While this scale color brown is going to really help us have that highlighted texture on there to get A, a nice matte finish, and B, really make these trousers stand out a little bit. Uh, don't forget the belt loops. I'm a bugger for painting belt loops the same color as the belt, which doesn't make sense. So yes, don't forget these. There we go, that looks much better. I'm really, really happy with that. And again, if you think this is taking quite long, this is a double size model of compared to a normal old boy. This will take you no time at all. Time for one of my favorite colors from Pro Acryl, their warm gray. It's a color I try and use in every project. I don't know why, I just bloody love it. So we're gonna use this to highlight the braces, the belt, and we're also gonna use it to paint the shoelaces on the big Orky Boys boots. Now, it was at this point, as I started applying it, I thought it's not as bright as it should be for a highlight. It's quite close to the original tone. However, I'm gonna stick with it, and we're gonna use it to build a more solid gray on these braces. At the end of the day, you could spend as much time highlighting braces as you do faces and teeth and finer details. Or you can just get some colours down on bits that people aren't going to pay much attention to. Me personally, if I've got 100 old boys to paint, I'm not going to stress about the highlights on their braces or their shoelaces or their belts. So we're just going to get a nice solid grey down and call that that. Once again, if you make any mistakes, if you get any on the black, tidy it up with some Black Legion. If you get any on the green, tidy it up with some Auric Flesh. There we go. As you can see, we're pretty much there with our initial base layers. It's time to go on to some metallic soon, but he's translating really, really well. Again, the eye is going to play tricks in this because there's still a lot of white on the gun, the helmet, and the base. So that's going to frame the model in a way that's not going to reflect how it is when it's done. If you get to this point and you're not sure, whack some dark colours down on those areas. I also applied a transfer to the back of his shirt because A, I love transfers, and B, it's just that nice kind of biker aesthetic with a big bull-headed logo on because, after all, he is a goth. Right, let's do some metallics on the gun and the helmet. This is my first time properly using Dark Star metallic paints, and I've got some good thoughts on those. I'll be doing a full in-depth article on the Dark Star paints at some point when I find the time, but for now I'll give you a brief overview of how I found them. So I'm using them on this project for a few reasons. A, it's new, it's something in a scale I'm not really used to painting, so if I'm going to do something different I may as well go whole ham. Uh, B, they were kind enough to send me a box to preview, so thank you very much, Dark Star Hobbies. I'm really, really excited to show you off what I can do with these. And let's find out how they do. So, uh, I started applying this to the helmet and the gun, and this silver is quite pale, so it did take a couple of layers to get on there. Let's see if my camera can focus and stop being a jeb. Yeah, Mom. There we go. That's a nice focus shot of my hands. That's what the viewers want. Subscribe to my only hands. Anyway, so we'll apply this paint. Uh, the first layer went on and I noticed it was still quite streaky. It was very translucent. So we're going to go in with another second layer. Since using these paints on a few projects, I found they go much nicer over a darker color than a brighter color. However, after a couple of layers, they do look fantastic. They're really nice to thin down. They apply really great. Their finish is absolutely fantastic. Probably one of the nicest metallic paints I've used in terms of finish. So there you go. There's our two layers done on him. We're now going to experiment with some shades from Dark Star to see how they translate onto this model. Up first is Murky Maya, which is their earth shade equivalent, their brown earthy wash. So we're going to apply this on the helmet, the gun. Uh, he's got a couple of clips on the back, which I've painted in metallics as well. So I started applying this and instantly saw it started to change the hue color of the metal, which is great. That's really, really fun. Uh, but they are quite heavy, so you do need to keep an eye on them. Don't over-apply them because they will pull and descend with gravity and leave nasty marks, so keep an eye on that. If I got this anywhere I didn't want it, like on the fingers of the clothes, I quickly wipe it away with my finger. But otherwise, yeah, ensure you get into all those details, all those nooks and divots and rivets. There's it applied. We're going to leave it to dry and see how it looks. That's looking great. I'm really happy with how that's finished. 
So we're going to hit it again with some Victorian Pala. Now this is their kind of rich, warm Reichland equivalent, good for gold and metallics. Now, the main issue I've had with these Dark Star paints is I've opened a couple of them, and the threads where the lids grip onto the bottle have split, and it's made an awful bloody mess. Uh, I messaged Dark Star about this to see if this is something I've done or if it's an issue that they've come across before. I'm waiting for them to get back to me about that. But yes, I'm going to apply this a lot thinner than I did the Murky Mire because I want to tint it but not have it settle too much in the recesses where it darkens it down too much. So a lot less paint on my brush. I'm going to basically use it like a glaze just to change the hue of the metallics. Really gently applying this because I want to go for a nice kind of deep rusted metallic color on here. And as you can see here, as soon as it hits that helmet, it starts to change the colour instantly. Really, really nice washers, really, really fun to use. I can't wait to see what these can do on larger metallic surfaces. But yeah, my only issue so far is that the thread splitting on some of the bottles has really made a mess. And uh, some of the paints have sadly dried up because of that and I can't use them. Really, really loving this colour and how it's turning out. But when you put the lid back on, because the thread split, paint spurts everywhere. Brilliant. Cheers, guys. But don't worry, it'll be reet. We're now going to bring that silver back up with the old silver that we used before. Uh, I've used some old masking tape to cover the hands and the fingers because we're going to sponge this on to see how it looks. I've tried dry brushing it. It didn't come out fantastic. Uh, you lost a lot of that great metallic finish with it. I'm going to keep trying now and see what I can do to make that work. With sponging, however, you can be heavy, you can be light. If you wanted to use a stupidly bright silver, you could really, really delicately sponge this on, but because I'm going with the original silver, I want to be quite heavy handed with this sponge. So dabbing it on the highest surfaces and the raised flat areas, I really want this to transpire nicely. So I'll apply it quite heavy handedly because I want it to match the little 28 millimeter boy I've got next to him. Again, if you get this where you don't want it, on the clothes or the skin or whatever, just tidy it up with the colors I mentioned earlier. But so far, this is sponging on really, really nice. So he's not quite as silver as the 28mm boy, so I'm going to keep applying this and try and get it as close as possible. Keep in mind it is a scale up, so it's going to struggle to I'd like the identical two. So I got to this point and I was relatively happy with it. Up next, time to be brave, we're going to do some check patterns on the gun casing. So back to my Monument Hobby Pro Acryls, I've got some cold black and some bulb titanium white. Uh, this is a lot easier than a lot of people think it should be. So you start by painting the entire surface with black. Again, cold black from Pro Acryl, thin down with a bit of water. Absolutely wicked paint, I love it. There we go, you get your solid black. And then you paint the rest of the owl. Uh, my phone sadly died and I wasn't able to film myself painting the checks, but how you do it, you do grid patterns using the white paint, then you fill those in with the white, tidy up with the black, and you're done. Here is our finished big boy. Thank you again to Hardcore Miniatures for sending me these STLs. They printed great, they painted great. Definitely go check them out and treat yourselves. Uh, I added a little bit more details on the big boy with some dirty down rust in the weapon creases and I painted the ammo shells a brighter gold. But there you go, really really enjoyed painting him, go get yourself some cheeky York STLs, 
Thank you again to Hardcore Miniatures. Leave an awkward comment to one of the little boys. Peace!